besties, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I am a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program, a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where my clients lose anywhere from the last five pounds to we've had people lose up to 70 pounds. So if you want to learn more about that program, go ahead and click the link in the description bar. Also make sure you click subscribe and you turn notifications on so that you can be notified as a healthy honey every time I'm delivering the freshest news in plant-based weight loss. In today's video, you are going to learn whether or not a low-fat diet is safe for women, why a woman might lose her period during a time of dieting, and whether or not it's something to freak out over, how to fix your hormones after a period of dieting, and the million-dollar question, can we permanently mess up our metabolism and are some of us just screwed because of the restrictive dieting that we've done? All in today's video. Now let me talk about why I made this video. So. I had this vision. As you guys know, I have the Slim on Starch program and I have clients who are basically family because of that program. When you go through that program, we really do become buddies, we become honeys. And I had this vision for meeting all of these people and relaxing and being on the beach and having like an oil-free, vegan, SOS-free feast and just being able to get to know one another and nourish ourselves on delicious whole plant foods. It was this vision that I've, I've had for a long time. And so I said, I'm going to make this a reality. In 2020, I'm going to have a client's retreat where we go and we do exactly that. We sit on the beach, we enjoy one another, we get to know one another, and we eat delicious SOS-free vegan food. It's going to happen. And so I started poking around on the internet, seeing what I could find, and I found this place called Balance for Life. And Balance for Life is exactly that. It is an SOS-free vegan retreat. And so I reached out to them and I said, listen, my honeys, we gotta come, we gotta have a retreat here. And I was speaking with Danielle, who is the CEO at Balance for Life, and we just had such a great conversation. And she said, you know what? I should set up an interview with you and Dr. Frank Sabatino. And I was like, oh, Dr. Frank Sabatino, he's pretty legit. I already knew who he was, familiar with his work, and I jumped on the opportunity so quickly because he has such expertise in so many fields that I get asked about all the time. So I thought, why don't I interview the expert? And what I wanna do is have him deliver his wealth of knowledge and then I'll sort of sum it up in what we call like healthy honeys terms. This is like my favorite thing to do is to take very high level information and then just sort of say, this is what this means. And so I'm picking his brain on so many topics and listen, honeys, we talked for an hour and I could have talked to him for a thousand years and we touched on so many topics. And so this video is only about the female hormone piece and I actually have another video that's going to be about more of the female hormone pieces um, as well as fasting, intermittent fasting, high fat diets, high protein diets. We've really touched on so many topics. So if you want me to do this as a series and, and put out the rest of those videos, if you want to hear about those topics, leave a comment that's says yes in the comments bar and I'll post the rest of those videos. Otherwise, this is the end of Dr. Frank Sabatino, but I don't want that to be the case. But leave a comment and let me know if you want me to release those videos on the other topics like fasting, high fat diets, high protein diets, um, starvation, that kind of stuff. And we'll talk about that, but only if you leave a comment. So truly, pause this video and let me know. Leave a comment, say yes. Pause this video and say yes if you want the videos on the rest of those topics. And by the way, I am having my retreat. So if you wanna come on that retreat, come join the Slim on Starch program. The link is in the down bar. So Dr. Frank Sabatino is currently the health director at Balance for Life in Florida, and he has a PhD in cell biology and neuroendocrinology. What really got Dr. Frank Sabatino into the game is the book that he published on the effect of brain peptides on reproductive hormones. And when I saw that this is what really brought him into the game, I had already known who he was because of his connection the balance for life and just from the incredible work that he's done that he's published but when I saw that this was where it all started I said I've got to ask this guy about everything female hormones and weight loss because we as as females should have some healthy concern about this and I really hope that this video helps ease your mind about that so the first thing that I asked Dr. Sabatino was the million dollar question is a low fat diet safe for women of childbearing age if we want to be able to have a healthy period have children should we consciously be including 
adequate higher amounts of things like nuts, seeds, avocados to ensure that our hormones are healthy. And this is what he said. The big piece about hormones and, and fat is that we're not advocating no fat, we're advocating adequate amounts of fat. I think people had this notion that higher amounts of fat are under the, under the heading of adequate and everything else is low. We're making the contention that the lower fat that we're recommending, because we're not adding any oils to the diet. I mean, I'm recommending an eating plan that is non-SOS, no added salt, oil, or sugar. But that doesn't mean we don't have adequate fat. We're just recommending fat in whole food form. So we want that fat only coming in in the foods in which it exists. And for women in childbearing age, we're talking about eating nuts, we're eating avocados, we're eating plants. If you had a, we're, we're recommending a diet that's about 10 to 15% fat. If you had a diet of lettuce only, it still would be about 5% fat. From the standpoint of calorie density, we're trying to keep the fat at a certain place. We're trying to keep saturated fats out, which is within all the animal-based products, but making sure that people have adequate fat. And for women in childbearing years and also nursing after babies are born, those fats are critical. You need those essential fats. Remember, there's two classes of fatty acids that we can't make in the omega-6 and the omega-3 family. And plants provide those beautifully. It's just a question of making sure you have adequate fat without going into no fat. That would be a problem for me. We're recommending no more than an ounce or two at the most of nuts in a day and probably a quarter of a small avocado in any one day as concentrated fat. If you're pregnant and you wanted to add a little more than that, I don't, you know, we're always looking at a vegan diet to make it as diversified and as inclusive as we can from the plant-based world. Dr. Sabatino sums this up so beautifully. We do not advocate for a no-fat diet. We advocate for a low-fat diet. And that's something that's often mistaken with the diet that I eat, is that it's a no-fat diet. But that is not the case because all whole foods have fat in them, which is important because fat is essential. As Dr. Sabatino says, there are types of fats that we cannot make, which is what essential means. If something is essential, it means that our body cannot make it, and there are types of fat that are essential that we must get from food. This is why I advocate for a whole foods plant-based diet so that you can get the natural fats that are in those foods. Now, what Dr. Sabatino also says is that we have to be very, very careful because there is a fine line between ensuring that you're getting adequate fat and getting too much fat because of the caloric density. And so what he does at Balance for Life is he has it so that they can have things like nuts, seeds, and avocado, but they're having no more than one ounce a day of these things and no more than a quarter of a small avocado a day to ensure that they're not having too too much fat, too many calories, but still you're getting all of the benefits from these totally healthy foods. Now on my program on Slim on Starch, because I don't want you weighing and measuring, what we do is during the weight loss phase, we say, okay, let's hold off on that stuff for now, just so that we can really fill a basis of starches, vegetables, fruits, and legumes. And then when you get back into weight maintenance, we'll teach you how to reincorporate those totally healthy whole foods. Now, if you want to weigh and measure to make sure that you're having no more than a quarter of an avocado, no more, more than one ounce of nuts and seeds, then go for for it. And if it helps you sleep at night, knowing that you're having those essential fats, then go for it. But do keep in mind that all whole foods have fat. The only way that you could get on a no fat diet is if you're having fruit juice and sugar all the time, which I do not advocate for. But all whole foods have fat in them. And I, I out of curiosity, went into chronometer, chronometer, whatever. And I said, I, I wonder how many grams of fat I'm eating a day. And it looks like I'm eating an upward of 20 grams of fat every day just from the foods that I'm eating. You know, things like zucchini have a good amount of fat in them or edamame has a good amount of fat in them. So just being conscious of the fact that all whole foods do have fat, but if you wanna be extra, extra sure and make sure that everything is a-okay, go ahead and add up to one ounce of nuts and seeds or a quarter of an avocado a day. I don't personally do it, but if it makes you feel better and you actually physically feel better doing it, then go for it. The next thing that I wanted to ask Dr. Sabatino about is period loss because it is not uncommon 
for a female to lose her period during a time of weight loss and let's talk about why that is. So of course, if you are going to have a child, you want to make sure that that child can eat. And what we have to keep in mind is that we have the brain of a, a primal caveman. We still have brains that are 100,000 years old. And so if we are not eating enough, our brain actually reads that as a famine in the environment and there's not enough food in the environment. That's what our body thinks is going on when we're not eating enough calories. In order to lose weight, you gotta be in a caloric deficit. So you're eating less calories than you're burning. Side note, on the Slim Unstretch program and Dr. Sabatino, this whole lifestyle, we do not count calories. We just naturally get you in a, into a caloric deficit by changing the foods that you're eating so that you're naturally in a caloric deficit, but you're not starving, you're still nice and full, but just changing the caloric density of the foods that you're eating. Just a little side note, we don't encourage you to count calories and make sure that you're in a, you're in a calorie deficit. But moving forward with what I'm saying is if you are in a caloric deficit, your body thinks there's a famine. And if there's a famine, if there's no food in the environment, it's not a safe time to bring a child into the world because that child, there's not gonna be enough food for them. And there's not gonna be enough food for you in order to breastfeed the child. It's just a bad idea all around. And so your body will shut off that menstrual cycle because doesn't want you to bring a child into the world. Not to mention, it requires energy to get that menstrual cycle going. And so your body's gonna alloc allocate calories to something else, not to the menstrual cycle. For that reason, you might lose your period during a time of weight loss. And I wanted to know, Dr. Sabatino, What's the deal with this? Is this dangerous? I mean, if somebody's overweight and they need to lose weight, being overweight is dangerous, but also not having your period, that's very unsettling. So tell me about this, Dr. Sabatino. Women are, are the dynamic sex. I call them the dynamic sex because they're much more dynamic than males are. There's much more stuff that they're connected to in natural rhythm than the male is. Their menstrual cycle alone is a monthly cycle. It's connected to nature. It's connected to light, darks. So it's very connected. So things that change abruptly in people's lives, especially women, can alter the cycle. So women can have a menstrual cycle that may stop or may come early. So they don't always just stop. Sometimes they actually change in rhythm and pattern. They can come at different times. So whenever you're making uh, wider spread changes with food, or fasting or anything like that, you can almost expect in women that there's gonna be a shift. But usually as you get stable with what you're doing, that rhythm comes back. So I just urge women not to freak out because I get calls all the time when I'm fasting women, oh my God, my period's here, I just had a period, or I haven't, you know, I, 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 I was supposed to have my period and it didn't come. And so there's a lot of fear around that. And my feeling is if you diversify the diet and stabilize it, the rhythm of the cycle will typically recover and return. But your point is well made. If you go through a period where there's rapid weight loss, you can have a change in cycle, you can have hair loss, there's things that can happen because of the abrupt change. And uh, you, know, you, you don't wanna see weight loss go so quickly, uh, but the bottom line is initially when you start this way of eating, there can be a dramatic rapid weight loss that can shift women's cycles. So they just have, in my opinion, they just have to relax. It usually will recover and usually will restore its balance. Dr. Sabatino brings up such an insightful point here, which is that women's bodies are so rhythmic and we're very fluid and we are easily adaptable, which means that during a time when the period is not around, we can view this as a time of adjustment and it's not that our period is gone forever. It's just that our body is sort of in a different rhythm right now. But once we get into that weight maintenance stage, we can move our body back into the rhythm of menstruating. So if a period is not present during a time of weight loss, the last thing to do is to freak out and to say that it's gone forever. That is not the case. So long as you get back into a place of energy balance, once you've lost the weight and you start, your, your body starts to shift toward the growing of the cells, toward the nourishment, toward the natural processes that a healthy body would do, then you're gonna get your period back. But when you're losing weight, you're getting your body out of an unhealthy place with being overweight and into a healthy place of being at a healthy weight, and then you'll be able to resume those normal processes. So then I wanted to shift gears a little bit and ask Dr. Frank, 
What happens to our body during a time of restrictive dieting? Because crash dieting is so common, stressful crash dieting. And I want us to understand what's going on inside our body when that happens. And here's what he said. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we as a species, as other mammals too, have adapted to uh, not only periods when food is abundance, but we've had to adapt to periods when it was scarce. I think if you look in our past, you would understand that there were probably times when the environmental pressures were so great that food supply was not available. So you ate and then you had to live on those reserves, maybe for an extended period of time until food was made available again. So we now know that there's physiological responses in the body where the body will react to a period of abundant nutrition and then it will shift gears to adapt when you actually take nutrients away is an entire shift in cellular activity that occurs in the absence of nutrient input. And so um, and part of that happens through enzyme systems in the cells that are called second messengers. And this is how in the fasting process, there's a process that's very profound called autophagy. And in autophagy, it's almost akin to a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. The body, when nutrition is taken away or calories are restricted, it creates the action or the actual reduction and the action of growth enzymes in the cells, enzymes that promote growth and division of cells. They now go into a different process where now the cell will start to clean up debris. It will work on maintenance and repair more than growth and division. So the body's constantly at a cellular level adjusting to calorie input, calorie restriction and making adjustments around both of those. Even if you restrict calories or if you do a juice program or even if you do an intermittent fast where you go a certain period of time in the day without eating and then you eat within a window of time. So we see that adjustment all the time, but it's very profound. It's a profound adjustment. So I want to pause here and sort of sum up what Dr. Frank is saying. He's reminding us that our body works in rhythms and that during a time of fasting, our body is going to work on things like cell repair and cleaning up things in the cells. It's not going to focus on growth. And this is why fasting is really beneficial for cancer patients because cancer is rapid cell growth. And so during a period of fasting, your body's not going to work on that growth. It's going to clean up the debris. It's going to work on cell repair and that will prevent the cancer from spreading. But what we need to realize here is that there's sort of two phases that our body likes to move between. And it will move between those two phases during the course of a day, which is why intermittent fasting is actually beneficial so that we can move between the period of cell repair into cell, into cell growth. So I just wanted to reiterate that before Dr. Frank continues. A lot of people on these fed calorie restricted diets or extreme diets, you know, it was under stress, they're drinking coffee, they're running around. So did they harm metabolism? Yeah, probably. And what they probably did is they affected the set point, which is kind of a thermostat that the body has for how it looks at calories coming in versus calories going out. So for example, if I'm being very active and I decide to dramatically restrict calories, well, now my body is going to be going into a mode to try to conserve whatever calories it has and it's gonna to try to slow down metabolism extremely to hold on to whatever calories it has because you've made the decision to, to, take, to starve it while you're being very active. That's not in your best interest because now you're gonna establish a set point where the system will be more, more, more inclined to hold on to calories in the future and store it as a form of energy in the form of fat. But if you do it under resting conditions and you just have a, more, a lower calorie dense diet with more diverse nutrition, we don't see that effect. It's only when you go into those extreme, extreme approaches, whether it's just high fat or high protein or no carb, and, and you're just trying to dramatically restrict calories while being active and under stress, yes, you will. That's why I urge people not to go on those extreme things. If, to me, weight loss is all about eating the way we're recommending with fit, consistent activity, understanding the role of stress in the process, understanding all of those pieces, and creating a lifestyle that's going to foster weight loss across time. And what will happen is you'll lose weight that then will happen along with a lowered set point so that you're more efficient with calorie burning rather than calorie storing. 
what's happened for people that do these fad approaches, they become very efficient at calorie storing and not efficient at calorie using because you scared the hell out of the body by putting so much activity and so few calories that the system is now like wanting to vigorously hold on to whatever's there. And now when you eat anything, you're holding on vigorously and you can become more, uh, you can put on weight a lot easier. That's why there's so much reactive weight gain after fad diets. Think about it. It's very difficult for people to keep weight off because they, the system changes in a way where it wants to now hold on to calories forcefully. And then I asked Dr. Frank, all right, what happens after the restrictive crash dieting period when you say, you know what, I'm going to fuel my body on whole plant foods. I'm done with the crash dieting. I'm done with the yo-yoing. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to nourish my body and let's do this thing. What happens then? Yeah, that's what I tell them. I said, uh, they got to understand that no matter what happens in the body, whether it's a disease or a weight loss parameter, there's always a time factor for recovery. And we're not a culture that likes, and especially as the younger parts of our culture, we want everything to happen quickly. So everything has got to be this almost fast food mentality. We're processing information. Quick. Everything is quick. The problem is the body's not on that plan. The body's on the plan where there's a time factor for recovery. And if you think about the fact that wherever you are in this moment took months and years to get to, so if you want to move from this place to another place, there's going to be a period of time that it's going to take for that system to make those changes to get to that place. And whether you're cool or not with that time factor, it's still going to take time. And if you're not cool, you're going to be one very frustrated person. And so I try to talk people through that process, make them aware, just hold your ground, stick on the program. There's going to be some change. There's going to be some symptoms. Some of it may not be comfortable, but you will get to where you want to go, but you've got to respect the time factor for recovery to some degree. Nice thing about a plant-based approach is that that time factor happens relatively quickly if you stay on track. Metabolism is established in a way where it's now trying to more rigorously go into that growth mode, hold on to stuff because it perceived the deprivation as kind of a threat to its integrity. So, I mean, we can go into all the factors. For example, you'll have, under those conditions, you may have something like insulin resistance. And so if insulin is not functioning well, and it's not allowing sugar to enter your cells effectively, the sugar levels may become a little bit more erratic, and your body will protect you against the elevated sugar, which is a toxic threat, by converting it into fat and weight gain. So the hormonal situation, you have to understand, when you go on those fat approaches, especially with high fat and high protein, you've actually damaged the insulin regulating system. I just want to pause and say that if you are coming from restrictive crash dieting, I know that this can sound scary to hear and it might make you want to click off the video and say, no, 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 I'm just going to keep doing my crash dieting. I don't want to go through all this. I don't want to gain a bunch of weight. Just pause and breathe because I wouldn't deliver you this information if I was just going to scare you and say, see ya. There's a reason why I'm delivering this information and it's because there is another side. And it's not just that you're gonna balloon up forever if you've been restrictive crash dieting. The majority of my clients, this actually does not happen because we really hone in on the whole foods plant-based diet and also the mindset, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. But I do want you to hear the rest of what Dr. Sabatino is going to say, but I really do wanna pause and come in here and say that if you are feeling that fear right now, I want you to know that that is normal and that is something that so many people feel at this time and it, it's it's going to be something that is going to want to make you stay where you are but what I want you to do is to feel that fear and do it anyway and I will tell you why we want that to be the case because there is another side as Dr. Sabatino will talk about. But the body can change that too so even if you've moved to that place and you get on a good eating plan, and you get on a modest but consistent activity program, that set point will change, but it could take as much as three, six months, or a year for that to change back. So as Dr. Sabatino is saying, there is a period of recovery time for some individuals. On my program specifically, 
This is something that we tend to avoid because we really tap into more than just the food, which is a big, big part for us to note here is that this whole journey is not just about the food, it's about other things as well. And that's exactly why we have Mindset Coach Kiki on the program to talk about those other things. And you might be wondering, what are those other things? It's compulsive food use. It's hand to mouth, hand to mouth, hand to mouth. You know, I have, I've heard people say, well, you can't binge on apples. You can binge on apples because I've seen it happen. It doesn't matter what the substance is. It's the hand to mouth, hand to mouth, I can't stop. And that's something that we would help you work through so that you can get to the place where you're truly nourishing your body, not forcing yourself to eat things without even wanting to do it. So that is another piece to it as well. And that brings me to my next point with, with Dr. Frank that I wanted to ask, which is, have you ever had somebody who really is the magical unicorn that can't have success on this because I know a lot of people think well I have a special case there's something that's just totally wrong with me my brain my body and it's just not gonna work for me and I I have not seen that personally I've worked with hundreds of people and I asked dr. Frank have you seen this and here's what he said not really because when I get into the nitty-gritty of it uh, I'm getting past the food and there's other issues that are playing. And some of these issues focus on the issues of compulsive food use, addiction, there's other pieces. And that's a big piece for me because I'm also in a, in a program that I, I do a lot of addiction work. And so what happens is um, you've got to look at, first of all, what they say is whole food plants based may not be what you say is whole food plant based. So you've got to understand what, first of all, what does that mean to them? And then we're looking at those three, those three things, those, that triple-headed monster of salt, oil, and sugar, and how much of that is still creeping in to what they're calling whole food plant-based. I mean, whole food plant-based to them may be eating impossible burgers twice a day, which are loaded with salt and oil. So it's vegan, and it's, a good, it's, a, it's, a, it's at least a way to get into the fold, but it may not be ideal for their weight loss program. Or they're eating four avocados a day. Yeah, it's great. It's avocado, but you know, so the bottom line is that you have to kind of filter through. That's why before I see anybody, they have to bring me an entire seven day uh, diary of everything that they do. That's how I do counseling. So they come into me, there's a seven day journal that has to be presented to me. And I mean, every minutia of food, every drop of exercise, every sleeping pattern of every night, I need to see it all. Because many times when you first interview people, they tell you, oh, no, I've been living this way for years. You know, it's not working. You know, really? Okay, well, tell me about it. How are you doing it? What do you do? Tell me what you do every day. And so once we get into that dance, many times you can see the holes. They start to reveal themselves. And then you say, look, it's not the food issue per se. It's, uh, you know, you've got to look at this in a more holistic way. And the food is going to be the foundation because there's no way if you're eating a low calorie dense approach and being satisfied at lower calories, that that's going to be a food, that's going to be a weight gain issue. There's no way. But the fact is, if it is and you're living rigorously that way, there can be some underlying hormonal stuff that's very old that needs to be rectified over a much longer period of time. And in those cases, I may fast that person, I may create some physiological conditions that give the system a chance to access that a little bit more uh, intensely. And then I'll look at that. But could that happen? Yeah, people complain all the time about that. But the question, if you're going to sit there as a counselor or someone that's going to work with them, you've got to have tools to take a little closer look at what they're telling you is how they failed. It's always nice to hear how people succeed. I love to hear how they fail. That's a big piece for me because I, I'd like to get into how they fail because then I get a look at what's the whole picture of this lifestyle. And that's important. Well, there is, uh, well, you can be on a good diet and you could be creating some imbalances of omega oils. You could be creating some imbalances of things like vitamin D or B12 or whatever. So, you know, we look at all of that in the overall eating plan. But as a rule, uh, my feeling is, I'd ha again, I'd have to see the blood work. I'd have to see what their real lifestyle program is. For example, you can have chronic stress that can raise cholesterol levels 20 to 30 points, regardless of what you eat. Mm -hmm. And so th there's other pieces to this particular story.
And that's exactly why we have Coach Kiki in our program to help you work through those other things. So I know this video has already been so long and there's so much more for us to talk about. Let me know if you want me to do more of this video. I have so much content from our interview and I would love to deliver it to you. So go ahead and leave a comment saying yes and share this video with somebody that you might think needs to hear it or would like to hear it because it would be so great to get more people into this community and, and get toward a real true path to health. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Woo!